Cranfield University is actually celebrating its 70th anniversary this year. Cranfield School of Management, its 50th. The date of the foundation of Cranfield is not accidental. It was set up in 1946, at the end of the Second World War, at a time when the British economy needed to rebalance and to um, bring people who had had military experience back into the workplace to prepare for a uh, peacetime economy. Cranfield was part of the British government's answer to that. So as a university, our mission and uh, indeed our, our mantra has always been a little bit different from traditional universities. We were set up to engage and that is what we have done for 70 years. And what makes us different is that the university is 100% postgraduate. Uh, one of the very, very few universities in the world uh, for which that is true, which means we don't have any bachelor students whatsoever. So that means we, we reach a smaller, perhaps um, more specialised audience than the majority of universities. Cranfield MBA is really the best place for someone like me, um, with a lot of years of experience, exposed, exposed to the business world, exposed to the corporate world, um, I didn't want just theory, I wanted the practical aspects of running a business, the practical aspects of working in a corporate. Also the international view, like having a view of the whole world, but in a class, and I found that in Cranfield. One of the things um, I like to emphasise about Cranfield is that we call ourselves a school of management, not a school of business. And for me there is a difference, because management is fundamentally about people. And to be a good leader, you have to know how to work with people. So an enormous amount of time and effort on our program is spent helping you understand and manage yourself as the first stage in that process, in order to be able to work creatively and constructively with others in your team, and for you then to be able to take some of that learning into an organizational perspective. So we see there is a continuum from personal to professional to organizational development. As a result of the MBA program, I am a lot more self-aware. There were lots of things that I used to do in a particular way. I really didn't know why I was doing it that way, but now I found out that it's who I am. And here I learned not to try to be somebody else, but to celebrate who I am and make the best of who I am. So another reason why I chose Cranfield to do my MBA is the class profile. Uh, the average age of the Cranfield MBA student is 32. So when we arrive here, uh, we are, are already managers, so we have some kind of managerial experience. And that brings the conversation in the lecture room up to another level. You can share with your colleagues their real life experiences, the insights from the industry. So this is the point that you start learning from your colleagues as much, if not more, than from your faculty. So the true value of uh, this MBA for me was it, that it helped me compartmentalize the knowledge I already had and put it into frameworks. For instance, uh, we're doing a project for international strategy in Zambia for a Zambian company and going back I, I would be using uh, knowledge I gained here from marketing, from operations, from general strategy and implement it all in the project. So in essence uh, it helped me muster all the knowledge I had, put it into frameworks and be able to utilize it in the future. Being a great technician is going to take you up to here, but if you really want to have that wow factor, if you really want to stand out from the crowd, it's in the development of your soft skills. So I would say that the Cranfield MBA is for people who are looking to leave a footprint, who are looking to be the leaders of the world in terms of the drivers of change. There are for me three aspects to doing an MBA. A lot of schools focus on the knowledge part. I like to say there's a holy trinity of knowing, doing and being. Who you are and how you do things is as important as the knowledge that you actually have. And this converts itself into the way that we approach social responsibility in its broadest sense. Because unless you look at yourself as an individual, unless you understand what your values are and test those with others around you, how can you go out and responsibly manage large organizations. So again, it is this consistency that we look for between the individual that you are and the leader that you want to become.